Hi there everybody, I'm Fred Thomas and you are watching All Things Bike and today we are speaking with Eric Weiss, the founder of New England Builders Ball. Eric. Fred, thanks th for having me. Thanks for coming up. Oh, my pleasure. From Providence, right? Providence, Rhode Island. Right on. Well, uh, it was a long journey, journey but here you are and um, now tell us about uh, the New England Builders Ball. When it, when you got started and where it's going? What's well, the like? New England Builders Ball is our region's annual hand-built bike show. And uh, this fall, in about a month, mm -hmm. we're going to have our seventh edition. I'm really excited because for the first time it's going to be in Boston. Oh, really? It's always been in Providence in the past. Okay. We had one year in Connecticut. But right. Boston is our region's, our region's, you know, one international city. Okay. Our, and to have it in Boston means a lot. Sure. For the builders who are exhibiting, uh, for the attendees who now it's a lot easier for them to come, and uh, and I, I'm really excited. Well, and the, and, the, and the space too. You're you're now doing it in in the uh, Boston Design Center, which right. is a pretty large facility. Right. So, so the Boston Design Center is part of the Innovation and Design Building, which right. itself is sort of a rebranded building that was built around 1920 mm -hmm. on the. Uh, part of the Bos South Boston Army Base. Oh, cool. So it's this enormous building. It's like a third of a mile long. It's huge. Right. And we've always maxed out our space in the past and right. had to turn away exhibitors. Whoa, right. um, and so to be able to find a unique facility that's not a convention center, yeah, right. so it doesn't have the, the hum of the HVAC <laughs> and like the awful fluorescent lighting and yeah. you know all the all the yeah. trappings of a convention center that really turn right. people off. Yeah, yeah. A unique, a unique, uh, distinctive setting, mm -hmm. but big enough that we can fit in as a, a lot more right. exhibitors and, and still have it um, have its uh, a charm or, or a pleasant feel. Now, was it originally in a in a ballroom or something? Is that where the name comes from? Well, yeah. sort of. Um, the name comes from the feel that we wanted to give right. the event. Festive. Um, yeah, a sort of a gala mm -hmm. sort of feeling. And to set it apart from other bike shows, which mm -hmm. are really more traditional trade show yeah, right. feeling. And right. the first several years of the show, it was in fact uh, held in a ballroom, mm -hmm. a, uh, a 1920, very great Gatsby sort of oh, yeah. ballroom, really, Perfect. really interesting. Is there a dress code? Everyone has to you know, put on a <laughs> dinner jacket? And um, swimsuits, not, not, <laughs> not okay. But, um, and then we moved it to New England's largest indoor botanical center. Okay. Again, a very unique setting for a bike show, right. lending itself to uh, a festive feeling with live music right. and, again, anything but an exhibition hall. Right. And then it was in an 1890s uh, exhibit hall. Um, uh, with you know painted frescoes oh, on the right. walls, just marvelous. Well, well, now you've hit the big time. You've done eight, eight, eight of these shows, and and how, you know, there well, are a lot of people. This will be number seven. This will be number seven. Okay. Well, um, how many people are, should be turning up? And give us a sense of the exhibitors and and um, what the guests are like. Right. So this year, I've, um, with some uh, creative geometry, mm -hmm. I was able to fit 34 exhibit booths into the space. Wow. And I'm expecting 2,000 attendees to go in and out during the eight hours of the show. It's right. Saturday, September 23rd mm -hmm. from 2 to 10 p.m. Uh -huh. So you can come after brunch mm -hmm. right. or, you know, go for a ride in the morning and then head over to the ball. There's no dress code. So if you want right. to, you know, just park your bike in the one of the hundreds of bike parking spaces at the building and just, wow. you know, tap shoe your way upstairs in right, your right. cleats. That's great. In your stinky Lycra, that's yeah, fine no, too. No, it's perfect. The timing is, is unique, you know, in the, in the evening. And, and, um, and if, if you're an exhibitor, is it, is, it all, is it full up? Is there, if someone sees you on this, on this show and they say, hey, I should go? Or, yeah, yeah we, we were sold out for months. Oh, and right. um, just in the last couple of weeks, two exhibitors had to drop out for a couple of different reasons. Right. So, you know, as I speak, as we speak, mm -hmm. there are actually two booths newly available which, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's a last minute wrinkle that sure. I didn't want to deal with. But on the other hand, it's a nice opportunity for any right. builder uh, of bicycle frames or maker of uh, bicycle accessories. So mm -hmm. the show is not strictly for frame builders. Mm -hmm. um, it's for people who are making bikes and bike related mm -hmm. paraphernalia. So right. every year we have makers, you know, North American makers of bike-related garments. Right. 
We have artists who work in bicycle themes. Doug Art. That's right, yep. Doug Dale. Doug Dale. Um, and uh, this will be, I think, his fifth show. Oh, great. And this year, we're, we've got people coming who make uh, like really sick carbon handlebars for, right. for track uh, racing. Accessories, right, right. or compo um, specified com even, components. Even people making electronics. Here in the north, here in North America, great for bicycle use. Right, so it's not, it's not, uh, the exhibitors are not restricted to New England. It just, it just happens to to be here. I mean, they're, they're, a lot of them are from New England, I think, but but people who are from all over the country can exhibit if they want. That's right. Now, being a one-day show, mm -hmm. um, most of the exhibitors are from within a few hours' drive of Boston. Right. But this year we have uh, five frame builders from Brooklyn for instance, just from Brooklyn alone. Right, wow. And then uh, it's a fellow coming up from Philly. Mm -hmm. We've got an exhibitor coming in from Ohio. So um, great. as the show gets more notoriety, mm -hmm. positive notoriety, mm -hmm. um, people come from further both to exhibit but also to attend the show. Right, right. And um, how about um, the sponsors? I mean, who, how did, how did they, I mean, tell us about that story. I mean, sponsor, getting sponsorship is a is character development in a, in a big way. How did, how did it go for you? Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. This is our seventh year, mm -hmm. and as the show grows, it gets more expensive to produce. And one of my objectives every year is not to make the cost of exhibiting mm -hmm. astronomical, because a lot of the exhibitors are people just starting out, and I want to facilitate yep. what they're doing. So instead of charging the exhibitors more, I work a little harder each year on sponsorship. And this year, our gold sponsor is Copenhagen Wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, the company behind that is called Super Pedestrian. Mm -hmm. Copenhagen Wheel is designed in the US, and mm -hmm. much of it is actually manufactured in the US. Right. And the wheels are actually uh, assembled in Massachusetts. Right. Um, they've got this wonderful facility in Cambridge, Mass, mm -hmm. where you can sign a bike out and fly around Cambridgeport. Um, and try it out. It's, it's an amazing, and I'm not just saying this because they're sponsoring the show, but it's really it's, a fantastic it, it's product. It's a wheel that has, uh, maintains its own momentum somehow? Or? It's a pedal assist electric okay. wheel. Right. And so as opposed to electric bikes where there's a throttle on your handlebar, right. and you can just open it up, basically that's a moped. Okay. Um, this is actually in making bicycling um, more available to people right. Um, who maybe live in a really hilly place and don't have the ability to be a bike commuter because of the hills that they're facing. Right. Or somebody maybe is getting on in years or has an injury right. um, who needs that little help. Um, you can talk to it through your phone via <laughs> Bluetooth. You can tell it how much of an assist you want. Well, I'm feeling right. strong today, so I think I need a 10% boost. Wow. Or today, oh, it was really rough. I only got an hour's sleep. Right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get like the 70% boost today. Right. Right has regenerative braking, so it repowers itself when you're, when wow. you're, when so you're this is, this is, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, this is a, a very unique um, product and, and um, it's something that people got to see it to believe it. It's, um, I know I do, and, and yeah. I will. I mean, yeah, I yeah, that. it's terrific. And at yeah. the show, you can actually, uh, uh, um, they'll have yeah, a booth at the show, and but also out in the parking lot, right. they'll have a tent where you can sign out a bike and go take it around the block. <laughs> so I'm really excited that they're our number one sponsor this year. Our other sponsors are also great companies. Shimano, everybody mm -hmm. knows Shimano. Oh yeah. And um, this is their third year, mm -hmm. maybe their fourth, as a sponsor of this show. So they've been showing a lot of love. Really right. appreciate that. And our beer sponsor this year is Harpoon. Wonderful. And in this part of the country, no beer company shows as much love to bicycling as Harpoon. I think so they, that's yeah. a really great match. So they, they, they're involved in riding across Massachusetts um, or, or they, they're involved in some event that, that has a Harpoon brewery at the end of whatever it is. But that, that, that is exactly right. They have two, two breweries, one in Boston and one right. somewhere in Vermont. Okay. And so they do a tour that goes between the two. Right. Um, and that's really terrific. They also sponsor <laughs> um, a lot of cyclocross racing, oh, that sort yeah, of yeah. thing. So it's, uh, tell us what, what, you, um, what you can observe at this event in terms of culture and community and, and, and people. I mean, what, what's, the, what's the vibe? Right, so as I was saying, um, trying to keep away from that trade show atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So when you walk in there, it feels more like a gala, mm -hmm. like an art gallery opening. Okay. And the people there and the items there you know, it's 
as opposed to a show that might be associated with uh, just cyclocross mm -hmm. or just track racing or something like that. It runs the gamut. So right. you'll see people there who build, yes, they build cross bikes, but also mountain bikes will be there, road bikes, Tandems. track bikes, yeah. touring bikes, bikes for randonneuring, yeah. um, and people who make bags for right. commuters or for long distance touring. And with the attendees, do you think? I mean, are they um, are they all from Massachusetts? Are they young and old? And I mean, do they know ever know each other, or well, is this all over? The map yeah, you because of the great um, depth of the type of product, mm -hmm. the attendees run the full spectrum. So you'll mm -hmm. have um, everything from bike messengers, you know, couriers. Mm -hmm. It's a very specific niche right. of of cycling culture to people who's, you know, every year they, they work for 50 weeks mm -hmm. so they can afford that two week bike vacation in right. Italy. And, and then everything in between. So mm -hmm. it's the athletes, it's nice. the commuters, it's the touring crowd, it's everything. And a great range of ages as well. Right, right. Um, I mean, it's really wonderful. Do, do you get the sense that, that um, the, the, your show is sort of the future of, of bike shows, um, or, uh, given that, that things like the big events that happen out in Reno, Nevada, and the things that happen in, in Taiwan are so massive and so huge that you, you, you become lost um, and, and you actually become exhausted because you've got to be there for three days in order to cover the cost. And right now, I mean, do you have any observations on that? Yeah, I do. I think there's always going to be a place for those kinds of shows. Mm -hmm. um, at the corporate level, those sorts of shows are always going to be necessary. Right. But at the customer level um, and at the bespoke, <clears throat> bespoke builders level, mm -hmm. uh, what I'm hearing is that this sort of show mm -hmm. is, is much better for them. Right. Uh, it's much easier to have a conversation. It's a very right. low-key vibe. Yeah. It's a low-stress vibe. And you know, not, not having the fluorescent lighting mm -hmm. beating down on you all day um, yeah. you feel better at the end of the day. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, you, and, and it, it's, it's closer, it's easier to get to. Um, can you just give us a, a quick sense of who will be there, um, exhibitors? That, yeah, uh, in fact, yeah, you've got a I have it here on my phone. Oh, wow. So let me, uh, I can actually tell you exactly who's going to be there. Um, so in alphanumeric order, 44 bikes who mm -hmm. build um, mostly mountain, but also road frames in New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, well, you'll be there showing. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Full disclosure, <laughs> 80 Bikes is a sponsor of this television show. Um, did, I, did I say the right thing? Yeah, okay, that's right. I will be there. I'm looking forward to it. I and mean, I'm really <laughs> excited um, because um, the stuff that you're putting together here and reviving the AD mark is really exciting for people who are interested in bicycle history. Oh, right, yeah, good. Um, I'll so, be ready. Here's a really interesting one, Better Bike uh, mm -hmm. in Western Mass, building power assist velomobiles. So four seasons a year, going out to get the groceries, whatever. Right. Um, full cowling with doors, even a windshield wiper. <laughs> but nice. you're pedaling right. in a semi-recumbent mode. You've got the electric assist. Um, C4, uh, bespoke carbon out of Brooklyn. Wow. Um, Chapman Cycles, that's Brian Chapman in Rhode Island, and All he's right. sort of the new vanguard when it comes to things like rondeneuring and touring bicycles. Wonderful. Give us two more. We, we, we're running out of time. Give us two okay. or three more. Um, I'm excited uh, that um, two of the deans of mm -hmm. American Frame Building will be there, Richard mm -hmm. Sachs and Peter Weigel. Oh, great. And let me do a shout out to my two farthest traveling exhibitors oh, right. this year uh, from Philly. Uh, Simon Firth is coming from Firth and Hanford. All right. Uh, Firth and Wilson, excuse me. Hanford Cycles. And then from Ohio, we have the out outspoken cyclist, Diane Jenks, who's coming. And uh, she and her husband have a company that makes rear view mirrors that attach to your helmet. There you the go. hubbub. Yeah. Um, so I'm really jazzed about this year's uh, crop of exhibitors. Well, this is great, Eric. I'm looking forward to it. It sounds great. Um, and uh, it, I, I can't wait to get there and, and um, basically talk bikes for, for eight hours. <laughs> it's going to be terrific. <laughs> Thanks so much, Eric. Thank you, Fred. All right, everybody. That's all the time we have. That was Eric Weiss of the New England Builders Ball. You can check out their website and do a search on Google. You'll find it. You'll see all the exhibitors, all of the uh, sponsors, and everyone who's going to be there, and you'll find out where to go. 
That's all we can talk about right now. Thanks so much. We will see you again soon. All Things Bike with Fred Thomas is brought to you by Zentis. Performance carbon wheels handmade in Austria for road and off-road riding. Zentis. Next generation wheels. And Frame and Wheel eBay Bike Selling Services. Time. Space. Cash. Pick three. And AD Bikes. The modern face of Austro-Daimler Cycling and the bike company of the future.